back in 2003, we received a keyboard from a customer, and it had uh, eight parallel data bits of ASCII output, plus a strobe to tell the machine that the keyboard ASCII data was on the eight bits, so that it could process that key press. Now, the keyboard was full of sawdust, most of the keys did not work. And the customer told us which keys they used. And so I built an adapter to take an AT keyboard, take its scan data, bring it into a microcontroller, pick 16F84A, process that key press, convert the data from the AT keyboard to eight parallel data bits and a stroke of ASCII data going back to the machine. Now let me uh, show you how this works. I'll press a key and we'll see the LEDs this board over here just represents the machine. That's so that we can see the processed data on these eight LEDs. We'll get closer in a minute. There's a key press. And we had hexadecimal seven zero. That's the ASCII eight bits for the character little p. Here is Z, and that was seven nine zero one 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 zero zero one. Let's get closer to the board there when I press some of those keys, and you can see the machine representation on our little board over there. These are the eight data bits. This is the most significant bit, and this is the least significant bit of the ASCII character that's converted from the AT scan code to the ASCII code. This board right here is not part of this system here, but it gives us a visual display of the process. I'm going to press the P key. There's seven zero. We had 0, 1, 1, 1, that's a 7 in hex, 0, 0, 0, 0, that's 0 in hex. So combined, the 2-4 four, the four bit uh, LED patterns is 7, 0. Here's the key I. That's 6, 9. Let me press it again. Yes. Six nine zero one one zero one zero zero one. Let me press the zero key, and we'll see the ASCII representation of zero. There's three zero 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 one one zero 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 zero. Now it's three zero. Let's press the one key. There's 31, 3, 1. 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. Here's the 9 key. We had 3, 9, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1. Eight. Eight again. It's three eight zero zero one 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 zero zero zero. Here's the Z key. Let's press it again. And again.
the R key. The R key is seven two zero one 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 zero zero one zero. Let's go back and press that Z key again. That is seven A zero one 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 seven one zero one zero A seven A for the Z key. How about the four key? Let's see what that looks like. Thirty four three four zero zero one one zero one zero zero. Now let's look at the AT data on the oscilloscope. Now, I'm going to set our scope into single acquisition sequence, and it'll capture and stop the, uh, the 8 bits in the clock. The data bits for the AT uh, keyboard scan codes will be up here, and the clock from the keyboard will be down here. So, data and clock. I'm going to press the P key again. And we have the most significant bit right here. We have a start bit that goes from high to low, and then we have the data. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the most significant bit of that data uh, serial stream is right here. So the AT scan code for P key is zero, one, zero zero one one zero one isn't that amazing let's set our scope to trigger mode again and we'll hit the next key let's hit uh, let's see how about number nine there's number nine And it is, looks like, let's count again. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it is zero, one, zero, 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 one, one, zero. If I'm counting correctly. <laughs> How about the Z key? Let's press that. Oh, we put our scope back into trigger mode. There's Z. Now the Z is zero 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 one one zero one zero. <laughs> That's fascinating. Now you'll notice that we have a couple extra clock pulses over here and that is because you have a start bit right here and some uh, stop bits over here it's just like RS-232 transmission where you have start bits and stop bits Press the W key. That was one of the keys that the customer used. Let's go back to trigger mode. Press the W key. And here we have zero 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 one 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 zero one and then our start bit and the two stop bits. That is nice. That is nice. So we were able to take an AT keyboard and replace an ASCII keyboard that we couldn't repair. 
Oh, one more thing. The keyboard, when you press the key, there's one AT scan code sent out. When you release it, there's either an FO, then the scan code, or EO, and then the scan code. And so in the program, I'll show you the program and the uh, circuit drawings in the next videos, but we had to strip away in the program the EO and the FO uh, data that was sent along with the uh, AT scan code. So let me show you what that looks like if we can capture it. Let's get out. Let's go to run stop button only. There we go. And I'm going to press the P key and I'm going to try to capture it with the run stop button. There it is. There it is. F0. It'd be 1111100. One, 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 zero, 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 zero. And that's sent with the AT scan code for the P key when you release the P key. I think that covers everything. In the next couple of videos, we'll show you the circuit drawings and the code to make that board convert an AT scan code to eight parallel data bits and strobe of ASCII. We'll see you next time, folks. Have a good day. Well, in fact, have a good week. <laughs> we'll see you then.